Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. If you want to mitigate that kayfabe effect, jump onto our Patreon. Hit the description uh, directly below this video. You'll get uh, videos delivered to you before uh, anybody else. The videos are brought to you by the books that we make, and you're looking at a spread of our uh, our bibliography that's out there right now. Jim does uh, Hulk Grand Design, Street Angel, Plain Janes, I Got Red Room, Hip Hop Family Tree, X-Men Grand Design, WYSIWYG. Today, we're taking a look at some of the bounty of the Japan trip, man. And Peach Momoko, whether you fellas know it or not, man, she's an outlaw cartoonist. And... I have uh, some exhibits to sort of show off in relation to that. You know, a lot of people have seen her uh, her work in heavy metal, and that's a pretty hardcore story. But that's where that's where she gets her start for sure, dude. Uh, with this very very kind of hardcore, gory kind of uh, artwork that she's produced before she before Marvel got got hold of her. She made a dojin. She kind of highlighting a bunch of this stuff. And uh, when we interviewed. Peach with Yo asked about Dojinshi. He mentioned uh, that she did that collabo with uh, Shintaro Kago. We have that. We're going to take a look at that, man. I'm excited for that. You know, you talk about Outlaw, and I think some of the qualities that you see here. One, what a contrast, first off, just seeing her line work in black and white versus uh, the Marvel covers and things that she's done with the painted style. But also, like, you kind of can see, in my mind, some of the Outlaw quality is. The made-up tanks, right? The cartoonic, the cartoonish elements, yeah. the, the kind of like bending reality a little bit around maybe a concept or an idea or an attitude in the drawing. Cool thing is we have the art dimensions over here, 40, 45 centimeters by 60, pretty big image, uh, watercolor elements thrown in there. But yeah, there's, there's, there's mania in here. Peach and you are super fun to hang out with, man, because we were really bonding over, over gore imagery and uh, movies and things. So we were talking extensively about like uh, the guinea pig flicks. And they're like, oh yeah, we have the box set of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. When you see f faces like this, like it feels a little bit like that Maruo cat mm -hmm. who did Mr. Arashi's freak show and stuff. Yeah, I think uh, some of those qualities too. Even the fine line work with the big spotted blacks have some of those, uh, some of that quality. Yeah, like we did, we did a show on uh, Mr. Rashi's freak show. This is a very early kind of Maruo before he kind of ma matured into. Yeah, encourage everybody scary. check out that episode because it's very interesting mangaka. Yeah, a lot of body horror with Peach. Yeah, and I feel like she talked a little bit about this on our interview with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how, uh, you know, she's she's skating a, a th on thin ice with Instagram. Because Instagram is funny about shit. Because, like, like I've, I've had the same issues. And you can... I can draw a guy pulling someone else's eyelids out and cutting them off with scissors. But if you do it to yourself, that's the issue you can't mm. you can't hurt yourself you can hurt others but <laughs> what is wrong with us <laughs> <laughs> fucking badass man yeah the patterns the black and whites man the, the metallic surfaces great textures on there see this is real maruo vibe right here it just has this kind of dead eyes you know they ain't playing man they ain't play they have a giant collection of uh crazy flicks and Not bad. and uh and you'll be like, we have to watch our horror movie for tonight before bed. Like, like that's just, they're hardcore. They ain't playing. And in the interview, they were talking about, like, you know, she wants to keep one foot in the her old world of the people who sort of propped her up at this level. And they'll do shows, like, they won't do traditional art shows and stuff. They'll do, like, fetish conventions and shit. Uh, and have her just, like, regular old art table at, at these these kinds of places. You know, we talk, we've talk. we been talking a lot about comics in America and, and changing uh, ideas about the way comics in the industry here work. And to me, that's a piece of it. You know, like, like comics ought to be everywhere. When there's a horror convention, like horror movies and, and video and stuff, there should be a comics presence at a place like that. Yeah. You know, it really should be, uh, you know, like comics will fit anywhere. And especially like art galleries and things, for sure. The mania of this artwork. It cannot be overstated. Little booger in the nose. Dude, the chap lips. 
Yeah, there, it's listed as like watercolor, ink and graphite and watercolor. And I keep looking like, what is the, uh, what's the watercolor elements? You know, like I'm seeing, once in a while I'll see something that looks like a little bit of wash on it. But yeah. I don't see much that indicates watercolor. I just see ink on these images. Yeah. Yeah, like I think I think some of the wash, like it, you know, it's not ink wash, and I think the obviously that nose is a wash, but it's spare, you know. It's mostly the black and white that's doing the the, the trick, and just that thin line. Once again, it's a stroke of Maruo, man, where it's just that thin, dull line. It really sells the idea, you know, a dead line on a dead girl. Yeah, the fineness of that line, very impressive. Yeah. There you see a lot more, I think, of your watercolor. At the Itsushi Kaneko art show that she was a part of, there was, like, a room that had, like, tribute art. And one of her, like, you know, 60 by 40 pieces is there. And, and it it uh, lords over everything else. It was cool seeing her work at that giant size. Yeah, that's big. 60 by 90, that last one was. Um, I was trying to figure this, like, I'm doing centimeter conversions yeah. in my head and stuff. So you're looking at probably a little under 18 by 24 for, like, that 45 by 60. But like that last image was something like 60 by 90. So now you're looking at like two by three feet. Yeah. And, and a little bit off because these are those, I think these are those sizes of like A4s and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's not exact, but approximate. But yeah, two by three foot of, of these images, that'd be pretty powerful. Yeah. And imagine seeing a whole show of this stuff. You're leaving a changed person. Yeah. It's nice work. I haven't seen this stuff before. This is new to me. Oh, this is fun. A little bit of comics. Yeah. Wow. And these are the comics that I'm pretty sure uh, precede, like, her heavy metal that works. That makes sense. How how weird it is to see these whenever I think of her comics as, like, Demon Days. Yeah. I really like this. And again, here I am seeing some of those washes or watercolors. Oh, yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, the cool thing is when you see the wash, you see the paper texture, so it gets blown out to keep the to keep the white... I feel like that that mask shows up in Demon Days. Dude, we saw her um we saw her like setup strips, her like pitch strips to uh CB and the and the people at at Marvel and it's, you know, it's a full fucking comic that she just like did in like 2 or 3 weeks or something. I always wonder how much of that exists. Right. Cuz you hear about stuff that just doesn't get printed and it's like where are these mythic objects? So there, so there was like an uh, a, a, an animation like an anime or manga convention in uh, in California that commissioned that brought Shintaro Kago, Peach Momoko, the guy who did La Blue Girl, and the person who put the convention together. Uh, they commissioned this zine that only a couple hundred copies of this thing exist half of it is uh i think it's peach draws a story for shintaro kago to draw and vice versa so it's half of their artwork on each and if you're unfamiliar with uh with kago's work we did a video i believe on super dimensional love gun just like a quick glance through which is probably one of the most accessible uh kago books that you could get in the states right now um put out by Denpa, whatever the fuck that is. Yeah, and he is a drawer. You know, we, yeah. we, we talk about that now and then with different artists that we look at. But as you see examples of his stuff, like, he's a drawer. For you guys out there that love the Mobiuses and love the line work yeah. and the imagination, like, that's what you're going to get with this guy. And it's all hardcore. <laughs> it is, it is. But also, man, I look at his stuff and, you know, sometimes we speculate on photo referencing and things like that. This is a dude's imagination that you're seeing in these pages. Yeah. Yeah, but he's got that deft hand. Like, he knows anatomy. He, oh, yes. And, and, and the, the problem is he knows it so well that when he perverts it, it gets extra scary. Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder if some of the perversion is uh, the study of anatomy for this guy. Sure. Like, what if we take this person's skin off? Yeah, What's is, underneath? This is nearly like the body's exhibit. There would be exhibits that are like this, man. And this was sent to us by uh, the Mansion Press, uh, the same people who published uh, Josh Simmons and Patrick Keck's uh, The Bat. Uh, we'll look through some of this stuff more at, at, at a later date. But right now we're here to uh, look through the Peach and uh, Shintaro Dojinshi that was mentioned. Imagine stumbling across this. You know, we all go to these shows and there's small press or people have these like small scenes. Imagine that this is the one that you pull out just randomly and come home and, and unpack your books and you find this. August uh, 2017, this precedes 
the heavy metal work right. by by some months. It does, but at the same time, five five uh, years, five months ago, like this is not old stuff. No, yeah, yeah. She For, blew, she blew up. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. It's interesting because like the line that she employs here. So we talked about Maruo with that first piece. This is like uh, this is like the Atsushi Kaneko, where she's using that brush for inking, which you don't see very often in Japan. No, it's a lot of maru nib, and it's a lot of uh, G pen, uh, zebra pens that that are used. Very rarely do you see brush slinging, but she's like one of the best brush slingers of comics. It, it, she just uses it in color more often than not right now. Yeah, and it reminds me a lot of the uh, Bambi and her gun. Exactly, artists, that's Kaneko. Like, that's like, yeah, that's... that panel really feels like it. Love the gray wash in it, which also you know looks like same brush as applying that stuff, and it, it adds a lot. It's a good way to add a dimension. Yeah, yeah, and because she's putting wash down uh, in order to catch it and not blow out the levels, man, you're getting that paper texture. So she's using this very like linen-y, cottony paper to put her uh, her washes down on. Makes me wonder if the line is uh, concentrated black watercolor as opposed to ink because of what we were talking about with like how uh, their inks, a lot of their inks are not, uh, are, are water soluble. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if that was the same. I like the uh, attention to different panel borders as well. And you can see like the brush strokes, mm -hmm. you know, like the almost like a dry brush effect where you're seeing like a few of the bristles on there. Yeah. Kind of cool. And then a big uh, pinup of her 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 works. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look at that dude, like a feast. That is, that's something amazing. You can see how you get a fan base. There's a lot. Uh, like when I went to Comitia, there were there were at least three ladies that made manga about cannibalizing their boyfriends, and not horror. Like one was a love comic. Mm -hmm. Let's look through the Kaga, man, because it, it's got the it, the peach written story. We'll just put our hand right Ooh, on that. In color, too. Yes. Uh, I think we're going to see less and less Shintaro Kago comics uh, over the year, uh, like from, from now on. I think I think he's found his footing in a kind of a fine art drawing space. Yeah, I see a lot of his drawings, like on his Instagram. Yeah, yeah, but I, I just don't think that he's. He's. When you. Sometimes when you get these drawers, they're more drawers than storytellers. Much younger in that photo too. Like I have no idea. I've never seen him before, and seeing that picture of him there, yeah, younger guy than I would. I, I expect whenever you're really good at anatomy that you're old and you've been doing this for decades. Right. I don't need you to be a young person that's this good at it. Like, <laughs> it's just killer. <laughs> oh my goodness, kaiju penis boners and stuff, and then you get a little sample of his drawing. Yeah, this deconstruction of anatomy is what I think of with him. Yeah. But very inventive. Unbelievable. I believe that's the uh, cover to, to our Mansion Press art book. Is that? Mm. Nah. Part of a series, Close. it looks like. Close. Also, it's cool to see his work in color so much, because I, I, again, think of him as a drawer, and often I just think of line art. He's but, always uh, in he's color. He's very good in color, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like all his stuff on uh Yeah, maybe I should think Insta. of him as a painter, but... Yeah. So, super rare, super coveted... That's a cool book. ...item uh, in that I brought back from Japan, but... Again, to the makers at home, this is a, essentially a mini-comic, a zine, and yeah. you can see it's spectacular, it's beautiful, like... You know, the designed. format is there's no limitation on this format. Yeah, absolutely. And a small print run, even you know, like this is this is a boutique item that theoretically almost any of us could produce. Yeah, yeah, and the colors look good. It's not that like it might be off. Like it's it doesn't have that tone or sitting on top kind of effect that these like print on demand comics have. So it went through a good process uh, to 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 achieve those ends. But Jim, that's not all, man, because like. There was some some heavy bounty from uh, from the land of the rising sun. Yeah, look and at that piece of majesty. Li listen, I'm not gonna lie. When we when we interviewed Peach and Yo, and they're talking about what they do with their art and all that stuff, and oh, she sells the covers, blah blah blah. And he said something like, "But like Jim Mafood is our close friend, so we gave him the cover." When they said when he said that, I was thinking like, "Am I a close friend?" I was wondering, <laughs> and then uh. 
at Tokyo Comic Con. They came up and they were like, Ed, take this, man. Had it in the plastic and stuff. And it is so cool to get to see her work legit up close and uh, to, see, to see the techniques and all that. It's amazing that it's so much of it's on the page. All of it's on the page. Because you see, you know, like you always, I always just see her printed work. Yeah. And it's hard, it's hard to know what's uh, on paper and what's digital these days. And it's, it's spectacular what she does. The sharpness of her line is like those like car detailer, the pinstripers. You know, she uses high quality stuff. I've seen recently, uh, it's been kind of a meme on um, on Instagram, maybe it's a TikTok thing or something, where like extremely good accomplished artists are grabbing a cheap set of paints and brushes and then a good set and doing like half a face with each. That's amazing. I haven't seen those. That sounds great. It's so cool because first off, they're badass, period. Yeah. But you see, you do see where the limits are of like the cheap stuff. They're great artists. They still can make great art. But like, Always, when you have the good sable hair brushes and things, like you could see the sharp line. So she has just such good tools to be able to achieve that. You're not going to get that with your synthetic Pat Catan's fucking Michaels brushes. There's not one brush in Michaels that's going to get you that line. Like you got to you got to go out and you got to seek out the the um that good ho- horse hair. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a that's a beauty. But you can see like. She puts down her initial paint piece, man, and then she, the white is her accent piece. Like she will, she will go in at the end and just cut white all mm-hmm. over the place to give you that. When when uh, when I see this thing, I think of like that Morgellons disease, you know, where pe- people think they see like fibers coming out of their skin, but it's like totally unproven. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. One of the highlights, and the thing that I stare at the most is that eye, because that's just. It's so sharp, so tight, so perfect. It looks stamped. It's hard to believe that a hand produced this. Hard to believe that a brain produced this. Has Marvel done a, a covers like art artist edition type book of hers? I, I can't believe that hasn't happened yet, considering the volume and being able to see this stuff like Sans logo and you know grain of the paper and all that. It'd be pretty. Yeah, yeah. And just as a final highlight, uh, when we were at that uh, Tokyo Comic Con. <laughs> The the dude uh, Minoa Yutaka who who did all the designs for for Ninja Scroll like I met him last time I was out there I got up to go to the bathroom or something when I came back this was on my post it notes I had I had people um I had people come by and like write their name down so I could like personalize stuff to them but he drew a fucking Jubei in his sharpie and just like left it there man I was like nice meeting you Ed and I couldn't believe that when I came back I had a fucking Jubei yeah sketch. that's wild yeah. Crazy trip, man. Peach, yo, thank you so much for the artwork. And uh, it was a pleasure to bring this stuff to you, the Kayfabe audience. Without further ado, let's get out of here, Kayfabers. Remember, we just set up this Patreon. And if you jump on board, you're going to mitigate the Kayfabe effect at various levels. Jimmy, tell the people what's out there. Street Angel, Deadly Scroll Live, back in print, back in your comic shops after almost a year from Image Comics. Pick that up, some of the best comics I've made. Plain Janes, available wherever books are bought and sold. Hulk Grand Design, coming soon, hopefully. Marvel, come on. <laughs> and uh, please join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can see more of my original art and process, and you can download some of my out-of-print zines and mini-comics. Yeah, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube channel so that we can uh, notify you whenever we put out new vids to, the, to Gen Pop. Uh, you hit up my comics, man. Take a look at the bibliography. Red Room, the Antisocial Network. Red Room Trigger Warnings is out there right now. The Red Room comics are all self-contained, so each trade paperback has four complete stories. Uh, if you see an issue, grab an issue. I'm serializing the next round of Red Room comics on my Patreon. Uh, we have link trees in the description below where you can get to all those destinations. Jimmy, tell the people what else you have out there, man. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, Coffee mugs, fanny packs, all kinds of good stuff, stickers and more at our spread shop. That link is also below this video. It's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfib channel. Given those marching orders, Jim will be on our way. Read more manga.